Hi, it's Robbie from Southern California, and today I'm going to talk about totes. But keep in mind, totes, what you can grow in a five, six, seven dollar tote, something you got for free, or something you bought for a dollar or two at the thrift store, can make an amazing container garden for vegetables. Now, the reason I love totes is because they're cheap. You can start one at a time. You don't have to plant all your plants at one time and your plants have no competition as growing in a large raised bed. You're dealing with all your plants in one bedroom where this way everybody's got their own. But let's talk about filling totes. Totes come in all different colors. You pick the style you want. But as far as filling them, if you have the ability to fill them, there are so many things you can put in a tote. Now, as you fill them, I like personally to put your big chunky stuff on the bottom, like big branches and stuff you may have found. You could put pine cones in there, toilet paper rolls, everything on the bottom. The reason I like putting the big chunky stuff on the bottom is that's where your drain holes are. And all totes, all containers need drain holes because if it fills up with water and doesn't drain, your plants will perish and so will everything else that your plants need in there. So I like putting the chunky stuff on the bottom. The next thing you can put, think of it as layering it like a lasagna. You could put leaves and kitchen scraps and grass clippings and shredded paper and whatever you want and you're slowly building it. So let's say you get a third of the way up. You've got your chunky stuff on the bottom. As you've seen here, you're seeing all different containers I fill. And not all of them are gonna be the same. It's whatever I have available at the time. Anything that was once alive will break down and disappear. That includes your paper. That includes your cotton clothes. Anything like that will disappear. Remember, not nylon. So you fill it the way you want and what you've got. Yes, you can put orange peels in there and lemons, but if you're eating like 20 oranges a day, then maybe I would ease up on some of them. Might be a little too much acid, but I put orange peels in there and lemon peel and onions, anything you want, coffee grinds. So let's get back to the layering. And I want you to watch this because as you watch these totes being filled, you'll see that they're not all exactly the same. Mother Nature isn't the same. When you look around and you see trees dropping leaves and branches and whatever, not all the trees are the same. Some lose all their leaves at one time. Some don't lose their leaves at all and they slowly shed it. Some of them break their branches off, some don't. So it's not always going to be the same. The same is not important at all. What's going on is when you put matter in there that wants to go back and turn into soil. Your microbes get in there. You don't have to put them in there. They're going to find their way in there and the microbes start to break things down. If you've got your containers outside and you're near soil and not on a balcony or deck, the earthworms will find their way in. I don't put earthworms in mine because they crawl out at night and find their right way in. But you can find those, go to a friend's house, pick up a pot or a container on the ground and as long as it's damp under there you're probably going to find earthworms. Take a little shovel in case there's eggs there too and take that home with you. The point is it doesn't matter what you put in there. Keep your big stuff on the bottom. Think of drainage. If you loaded the bottom up with let's say your native soil that was clay it would block up your holes possibly. That's why you want to put your chunky stuff on the bottom. Then you're going to put, like I said, as you see all these things being filled, paper, shredded paper, toilet paper rolls, leaves. I love collard. It makes really, really good plant food. But whatever leaves you got, clean up your yard, clean up your neighbor's yard, and throw that all in. Now, while you're doing that, it would be really good if you threw a handful of soil in. And soil doesn't have to be the store-bought soil. That could be from the ground. But you can use store-bought soil. As you build from the bottom up, you can use the cheapest soil. It just so happens topsoil is the cheapest. There's not much in it. You could use that towards the bottom as you're building your container. In the middle, you could use garden soil. That's a little bit more than topsoil because they put a few extra added things in. And then, of course, on the top where your plants are starting to grow, you want to use, if you can, 
potting soil. It's designed to go in containers and it drains well, but it also holds moisture. And a lot of times it gives your plants a good jump start because some of them do contain a type of plant fertilizer. By the time your plant gets its roots down into the middle and close to the bottom, all those microbes in there, everything that's breaking everything down is going to give your plant everything it needs. Now, as long as you have a layer of potting soil, or some of you say you can use topsoil, and some of you say you use your garden soil, whatever works for you, as long as you've got a layer on the top, your plants will grow. You do not have to wait for anything to break down. I'll show you here, you'll see some of my containers were growing seeds through the compost I threw in there without any soil. I have grown squash that way year after year. I try to collect seeds and kitchen scraps, you know, just seeds from, from the squash because I didn't want to eat the big squash seeds and they grew. There was no soil in there. I hadn't even gotten to the soil yet and they grew because they were growing in mother nature soil. So that's the main thing you need to know. You can put anything in there, layer it. And another thing, I only fill my totes about halfway. You don't have to fill them to the top. That soil that you're building is going to be so rich that you don't have to go to the top. Don't worry about it. If you want to go, let's say three quarters of the way up, that's fine. But a lot of my totes are only half full and maybe a little bit more. So let's say half to three quarters full. Keep in mind, keep your good soil on the top and your cheapest soil on the bottom and you should be good to go. I know a lot of you are starting the garden now. A lot of you are already gardening. It's not too late because you can grow in all that food matter that you're putting in there the moment you put it in there as long as you add in a couple inches of let's say potting soil or potting mix on the top you are good to go and your plants are going to love it i hope i've answered some more questions don't forget the drainage you cannot grow without having good drain holes and where do you put the holes where you want to put them for your area I put my holes about a one to two inches up so the bottom is always damp for the plants because we're so warm and dry here. If you're in a rainy area and you have a lot of moisture and dampness around, then put the holes on the bottom. But if you've got your totes on the ground, keep in mind you could end up with tree roots getting in there because the tree roots are going to find that rich, wonderful soil you built. So keep that thought in mind. I keep my holes up on my containers so the tree roots cannot get in. And on top of that, I do a lot of my containers on chairs. It keeps rabbits out. Squirrels don't usually go in it. And I don't have to bend. Makes life easier. And if a squirrel finds it, I just wrap that chair with a little tool and the squirrel is on its way. With that, have a wonderful, wonderful day. Don't forget to eat what you grow. Ask me more questions and I will come at it. And just a little note, you can compost in place like this, even in the ground, and cover it up. Have a great day, and don't forget to eat what you grow. Bye-bye.